Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about snow in medicine, so let's get started. Let's start with a question, shall we? So here is the normal chest x-ray, you see the beautiful lungs, you see the ribs all the way up to here, and you see the beautiful cardiac silhouette, etc. But what if it is snowing inside the lung? Yeah, literally, you see snowflakes all over the lung fields. What is this? Please let me know in the comment section. In the last year, we have talked about Christmas in medicine. Today, it is snow in medicine. Snow makes you feel cold. Cold, do not forget the glove and stocking distribution of diabetic neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy has many theories trying to explain it. One of the theories is accumulation of sorbitol. The patient will describe the problem as pins and needles with sometimes decreased sensations in the glove and stocking distribution. Please do not confuse this with syringomyelia because syringomyelia had a cape-like distribution. If you want to learn about all of this, please check out my video called Christmas in Medicine. Today we'll focus on snow. Acrocyanosis and hemolysis, this is called agglutinin disease. It happens to you, especially if you are elderly and shoveling snow for a long period of time. Not to mention frostbite, of course. Snowman on chest x-ray, this is TAPVR, total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Snowstorm on pelvic ultrasound, this is a high deform mole. Snowstorm or snowflakes all over the lung fields on x-ray, yep, this was today's question, and this is mercury poisoning. We have talked about cold agglutinin disease before, everything here is an M, it's IgM, ice cream is yummy. Also IgM is a pentamer, and it literally looks like a snowflake. I'm shoveling snow, so this is snowman. It's associated with infectious mononucleosis, Waldenstrom macroglobinemia, direct Coombs test can help you diagnose it. Treatment, please stay warm. You can give rituximab, cyclophosphamide if it's severe. Hey, medicosis, should we remove the spleen of the patient? Shut up, the spleen is mine. No one is gonna touch it because this is cold agglutin disease. If this is warm autoimmune, however, yes, you can remove the spleen as a last resort. Now let's talk about TAPVR or total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return. It's a venous return, no kidding, from the lungs and it has an anomaly. Sometimes the anomaly is totalis, called total anomalous pulmonary venous return or partialis, which means just partial. Of course, of course, total is gonna be worse. No duh. Congenital heart disease is divided into two subtypes, cyanotic heart disease and acyanotic heart disease. Cyanotic heart disease, blue babies acyanotic heart disease, blue kids. If they turn to be blue at all. What is going on in cyanotic heart disease? Why is the patient cyanotic? Why is the baby blue? Because of right to left shunt. Example, tricuspid atresia, tetralogy of fallow, T, a PVR, transposition, and truncus. All of them start with a T. How about the acyanotic? This is your VSD, ASD, and PAD. Ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defect, and patent ductus arteriosus. What is going on? Left to right shunt, and that's why it's acyanotic. Maybe at the end, complications will happen, and the pressure will increase, leading to the reversal of the shunt from left to right into right to left shunt, and right to left is cyanotic. That's why they can be blue kids, but only when they grow up because it takes time. But when the baby is born blue, it is probably one of this as long as it's a cardiac problem. It could be a lung problem. This reversal of the shunt is known as Eisenmenger syndrome. It's Menger, it's not Menger. Eisenmenger. My Boston accent is weird. Why is right to left shunt cyanotic? Think about it. What does the left side contain? Oxygenated blood, it just came from the lung. Awesome. What does the right side contain? Deoxygenated blood. It just came from the rest of the body. So when you have right to left shunt for whatever reason, now deoxygenated blood is gonna go to the left side. Deoxygenated blood is gonna end up in your aorta, in your brain, in your skin, in every organ. And that's why right to left shunt is cyanotic. So what is cyanosis? It's bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane. Why? Due to the presence of more than 0.5 grams per deciliter of what? Of deoxyhemoglobin. As you know, the hemoglobin is here. It's on your beautiful red blood cell. The hemoglobin can carry only one thing. I can carry oxygen or CO2 and they compete with each other. If I'm carrying too much CO2, they will call me deoxyhemoglobin and that's not good for you. It can lead to cyanosis when it exceeds a certain threshold. Where is this measured? In the vein? Vein? Shut up! Of course there'll be lots of CO2 in the vein. We measure this in the capillary blood. 
Let's talk about tetralogy of Fallot as just one example of cyanotic heart disease, blue babies. What's going on? First of all, the word tetralogy is very misleading. It's not four anomalies. It's just one anomaly with four consequences. So what's the anomaly metacosis? Look at this beautiful septum. It's normally like here. Okay. Now it has been shifted downwards and to the right. That's the only anomaly. Really? Yep. And look what's going to happen when you shift to this way, this area is going to get narrower because you have dislocated your septum from here to here. Of course, the right side is going to get narrower, leading to pulmonic stenosis. Okay, pulmonic stenosis. Now this right ventricle has to pump blood harder because this is very stenotic. I have to overcome this increased pressure and pump stronger. Okay, when you pump stronger for a long period of time, you will do what? I will have right ventricular hypertrophy, and this is number two. Next, when the septum is like this, some blood from the right side of the heart is going to reach the aorta through this opening, and this is called an overriding aorta. Imagine that you are a morbidly obese person that has to sit on two toilet bowls. Now you are overriding two toilet seats. That's a terrible analogy, I'm sorry. It just can help you remember that the aorta is sitting on two ventricles or the aorta is saddling the ventricles. And here's the last one. Since the septum here is defective, blood from the right side can go to blood on the left side. It's called right to left chunt. And this is called a ventricular septal defect or VST. And this is number four. So the professor can ask you, hey, hey, students, stand up, please. Can you prove to me that you know tetralogy of fellow? Sure, I can prove it to you. Prove pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, overriding aorta, and VSD, and it's just one anomaly with four consequences if you think about it. Now let's try to explain clubbing. This is just a theory. So let's talk normally first. Normally, your bone marrow secretes megakaryocytes. Megakaryocytes will go to vessels, such as your vein. Your vein will go to the right side of the heart, and then right ventricle, and then pulmonary artery, and then in the lung, the lung acts as a reservoir for megakaryocytes. And within the lung capillaries, these megakaryocytes can get crushed into small, tiny pieces known as platelets. Each one megakaryocyte can literally give you thousands of platelets. So why does tetralogy of Fallot has clubbing? Think of it this way. Here are the megakaryocytes in the vein. Beautiful. To the right side of the heart. Wonderful. And now you have what? You have pulmonic stenosis. Okay. And you have what? You have VSD. And overriding aorta. Since you have overriding aorta, some of the blood here that contains those megakaryocytes is going to reach the arterial blood, is going to reach the aorta. The aorta is not going to take you to the lung. No one will destroy this big megakaryocytes into tiny pieces of platelets. The megakaryocytes will get trapped in your extremities, specifically your distal ending, such as your fingertips, leading to secretion of platelet-derived growth factors. Because when the megakaryocytes get angry, they secrete lots of stuff. Platelet-derived growth factor, a growth factor derived from the platelet or the mother of the platelet, leading to growth of soft tissue, leading to clubbing, and it can lead to growth of bone, leading to new bony formation, and this is called hypertrophic osteoarthropathy, previously known as great for clubbing. Basically, this is a patient with severe clubbing at the fingertips, and his wrist is very stiff and large, with some periostitis, and it hurts at his wrist and other bones. Now let's talk about another cyanotic heart disease known as total anomalous pulmonary venous return. So what's the normal venous return? Blood is coming from the lungs through the four pulmonary veins, two from the left lung and two from the right lung. They end up in the left atrium. This is beautiful oxygenated blood. Cool. This is normal. Now let's talk about TAPVR, total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Let's talk about the pulmonary venous return, which is veins coming from the lung. Oh, these veins were supposed to empty in the left atrium, and this is not going to happen. They decided to collude together and form this kind of a channel or vessel, which will lead to right side of the heart. So now the oxygenated blood will go to the right side of the heart instead of the left side of the heart. So this oxygenated blood did not reach your aorta. It did not reach your brain. It did not reach your skin. And that's why you're cyanotic. Okay, now let's follow it. It's going to go to the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary arteries, and then to the lung. The lung is going to oxygenate it even more. Now you have lots of oxygen coming here. Will it reach the left side of the heart and your brain and your skin? It's not going to happen, baby. It's going to go this way. This. Oh, then who's supplying my brain? I'm going to die this way. And that's exactly right. This is incompatible with life unless you have an atrial septal defect. 
getting some blood from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart so the aorta can pump you some blood. So whenever you see a baby, living baby, with total anomalous pulmonary venous return, you can bet your rent money. There is another anomaly going on, such as ASD, VSD, PDA, etc. Something to get the blood from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart so that the baby might survive. This was the story of the total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Okay, how about partial anomalous pulmonary venous return? Okay, partial, it's not all of the four veins coming from the lungs that have a problem. Two of them will go to the left atrium. That's wonderful, beautiful, welcome home. But the other two will collude together, forming this kind of weird vessel going to the right side of the heart, and this will be called the partialis the partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. Now, normally your heart on x-ray should appear like this. Yep, the apex looks downwards, forwards, and to the left. That's normally, but that kid is not normal. Here, the right side of the heart is receiving more blood than the left side. As a result, it will adapt and grow, and your right ventricle will look like this. Oh, and this looks like a snowman on x-ray. I spent a lot of time in snow, called agglutinin disease or frostbite, snowman on chest x-ray, T-A-P-V-R, snowstorm on pelvic ultrasound, I did it, I did it for mole, snowstorm or snowflakes all over the lung fields on chest x-ray, this is mercury poisoning. And this of course is mercury poisoning. Whenever the radiologist looks at this picture, they will start to sing. And since we have no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Shut up, doofus. The patient is dying and you're singing. What is this? This is mercury poisoning. As long as you can make the diagnosis and help the patient, I'll be your friend. You can continue singing. Don't ever forget that this is mercury poisoning. You can show this picture to your professor. And if your professor said mercury poisoning, I would retire from YouTube and work as a plumber. And now you can use the promo code HALF to get a 50% discount towards anything on my website until the end of the year or 50 students, whichever comes earlier. For everyone who downloaded from my website, thank you so much for supporting this channel. As long as I'm alive, I'll continue to make videos. The clock is running, make the most of today. Time waits for no man. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. Go to my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. Use the discount code HAVE to get a 50% discount towards anything. In the next video, we'll start talking about endocrinology. We'll start with clinically oriented anatomy of the endocrine system. It's gonna be epic. You don't wanna miss it. I'll see you later. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.